And you're live. And then we're live. Live. We missed you. <laughs> um, we've been gone a couple days, but we are back. This is May and Mel at Woo! Food Waste Feast Cooking Demos in pajamas because that's what people are wearing these days. Um, so why bother to get dressed? All the craze. Like this. Nice. In your slippers. Tartan jammies. Full tartan jammies, which uh, Mel gave to me. <laughs> That's right. And the rest of our pajamas, Not many of which we gave to you. <laughs> so it turns out this is perfect for us. Yes. Anyway, on with the actual point of this demo, which is to tell you about bananas. <laughs> Woo! So we both have two kids. We go through a lot of bananas. Bananas are amazing because they keep for a long time, but also they're great for substituting. Um, they are great for making into their own dessert. They're great for adding to other things. They are super versatile and um, they last for much longer than you think. So a couple things, we have some. Also, because we have kids who love bananas, we also have lots of half bananas that don't get eaten. That is also true. So regular bananas, also, extra delicious bananas. Mm -hmm. Do they look like this? That's totally fine. In fact, that's great for things like banana bread and banana cookie, uh, banana muffins and banana pancakes, which we're making today. Um, we are also going to show you banana ice cream. So if you have bananas and they are getting to this stage and you know you're not gonna get to them soon, the best thing to do, where did I put them? Oh. Peel them. I learned this over the course of time. If you put a um, like a regular banana and just pop it in the freezer, then when you try to unpeel it, it all sticks together and is very hard to deal with. So if you peel them and then put them in the freezer, they are perfect for making banana ice yes. cream. Yes. Also, shout out to all my parents of preschoolers out there. If you've watched a lot of Daniel Tiger. You may know what <laughs> banana swirl is. We're going to show you how to make real banana swirl. My, we made some yesterday at home and my kids devoured it. So did my husband. Yes. It's super, super healthy. So bananas are a great <clears throat> substitute to get lots of sugar in. They'll help bulk things out. You can substitute them for eggs. Um, a lot of the dishes today don't have eggs. So um, yeah, Mel's going to show you how to make her... Uh, extremely popular with the preschool set, banana muffins, yeah. which are super easy. So after this, and when everything's done, guys, we're going to post pictures of some of the recipes that we've used onto our stories and maybe also onto the feed so they last longer than 24 hours. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, send them on in. We'll try to answer them as we go. And um, also some of these don't really have recipes because they're just kind of, you know, work with what you have kind of things. So um, let's give it a shot. I'm going to take over camera time. Everybody, say Woo! hello to Mel. <laughs> she is going to make these muffins that um, I have tried to make somewhat unsuccessfully several times, but she has now got it down to a science, and all the kids are obsessed with these. I have literally been making them for years. I feed them at lunchtime with some veggies, and guaranteed my six-year-old will come back for a second and sometimes a third. They just devour them. And I'm like, go ahead, because they're healthy. So we've already got one banana in here because it was pretty, it was pretty ready to just jump in the bowl. So I just let it. You can see how it is mushy Su and soft super and right. sweet. Yeah, yeah. Very, that's going to be right. really right. So, but still totally fine to eat. Absolutely. Two bananas, this is our compost bowl. One cup of, this is peanut butter. You can use almond butter, any type of nut butty one. So these are, I believe, gluten-free, dairy-free muffins, right? Yes. So obviously, if you have a, um, a nut allergy, not Don't good. Don't eat them. Eggs, <laughs> egg free, or do these ones have eggs? These have eggs, Okay, yes. so these ones have, they're gluten-free and dairy-free, though, so... It is pretty cool if you super, are trying to cut those out. Yeah, super simple. Two bananas, two eggs. Sometimes I do one and a half batch, which just gives you bigger muffins. And half a teaspoon, here we go. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. And a teaspoon of vanilla. And, 
blends. So it's going to get a little bit noisy. Technically, these are blender muffins, but I prefer them to them like this. <laughs> Oh, hang on. There's a... F Do you like my outfit? Yeah. Full <laughs> body PJs from two different sets of oh, PJs. Oh, yes. I mean, we said PJ series. We didn't say matching PJ series. Yes. Don't be crazy. So, I'm just going to grab a spatula. And at this point, you can add anything that you want. So, sometimes I sneak some little chocolate chips in there. Some blueberries. Anything you want. Cut up some... Apple. Yes, uh, the chocolate chip edition, as you can imagine, is a big hit <laughs> with the kids, but it's great. So um, if you make lunch for your kids, then you can take, they're great for just having a bunch of them in the fridge and then chuck them in a lunch box. They're eggs, <clears throat> bananas, nut butter. I'm willing. So they're super healthy and it makes it really easy to just add something that's got protein as well as um, fruit it. into it. And then she has already lightly greased a muffin tin with some coconut oil. Yeah. And those are going to go in at 400. Your oven is 12 minutes. My oven would be 15. So just depends on how efficient your oven is. Mine is a little less efficient. You can kind of get used to what is going to work on your oven. Then once you figure it out, easy peasy. Yes. Hi, Laura. We are wearing many prints. <laughs> Full body PJs. We're actually running out of PJs to wear, so we're going to start repeating, or we might move on to... Um, full body Pokemon outfits. Yeah, we might start getting ridiculous. Yeah, it might start getting ridiculous. I think that is highly likely, in fact. So now we are filling those muffin tins and Ooh. we're gonna get those in for about 12 minutes. And after that, we're going to show you how to make awesome banana pancakes. Um, now these are amazing if you have a baby or um, toddler or preschool, or, you know, whatever. Someone who, like my one-year-old who, uh, I want to feed something relatively healthy, but also something they can pick up by themselves so I don't have to sit there and feed them. But I'm all about things that are not super, super messy, but are relatively healthy, and I can just pop down in front of them. So these banana pancakes that Mel makes are perfect for that. Oops, so, timer. thank you. get this timer on. Yes. And she yes. is going to do these, pancakes these banana pancakes. Were... Um, All right. One of one of Gray's first um, finger foods. He loved them, and he still loves them. Um, these are a great um, weekend morning pancake. Also, because you know, a good classic pancake can sometimes involve a lot of ingredients. These ones are very very simple. So check this out. So literally one banana, one egg was actually how I made them for years, but I started adding a little bit of baking soda, a little quarter teaspoon, and you can literally end it there. However, I have started adding a little bit of oats. Kel, Just... Kelnell makes these, made these today and makes these every other day. They're amazing. If you have children, if you don't have children and you like bananas and you just have them around, do it. They're right. extremely, uh, they're extremely versatile. And um, another thing is, Kel's mentioning you can leave egg out if you want to. So I will often, um, I have a nephew who doesn't eat eggs, and so I'll make gluten-free pancakes, and then instead of an egg, put a banana in instead of the egg. It helps bind. It adds body. Plus, it is delicious, and it can help you minimize the added sugar. So Mel is going to blend this. So 
that was batter. one egg, one banana, a pinch of oats, a pinch of baking soda, which can help it brown, and a little, what was that? Was that that it? was it. That's it. That so, was it. again, healthy, easy, blended up, and it's great for, uh, you know, chill mornings. So, Yay. I've got this griddle warmed up. Get now, some oil on there. I actually have you seen you make these before and add spinach to them. Oh, yeah. Um, I couldn't get away with that with my kids because they've been eating these for years. And if I all of a sudden did try to all of a sudden serve them green banana pancakes and they freaked out. However, if you're starting <laughs> from fresh, then you can add spinach. I think you added kale before. Yeah, again, with most yeah. of the things... Um, that we are making with these pancakes, you can add a lot of stuff in. So again, chocolate chips, big hit in this house. Um, blueberries, raspberries, cut up apples. Yeah, I know, Timmy, hi. No flour, no milk, and they are delicious pancakes. It's kind of amazing. Um, you can do it without any kind of floury thing whatsoever, right. and they're just a little harder to turn over, so making them very small helps. Yeah. But small and cooking them slowly. If you've got no oats at all, the oats definitely give it a little bit more structure, but if you're going for uh, an oat-free one, just keep them small like this and cook them slowly, and then... You we are will be able to carefully turn them. I only started adding oats to my pancakes probably a couple of years ago. We are exploding Tim's brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Just <laughs> when you thought you knew it all, along came the pajama series. <laughs> da, 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 da. Can you put rum in it? That's a great question. Rum? <laughs> Haven't tried it? Would do. Well, maybe this afternoon once uh, some kids are napping. It might be time for the rum edition. <laughs> the rum series. The you know what? You can definitely add rum to what we're going to make right now. Banana ice, que ice cream, also known as banana swirl, mm. uh, also known as banana ice cream. So we're going to figure out, I actually don't know how to turn Ooh. it, I don't know how to flip it. That, so, yeah. that unattractive uh, angle. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I do want to say that my little guy is currently off dairy and he loves ice cream. And when I fed this to him yesterday, he was not disappointed at all. So... I was very happy with this. All right. Oh, Frozen banana chunks. Uh, peeled. I just broke these into chunks. You can freeze them in like a whole banana or you can break them up or you can slice them, whatever you want to do. Uh, I have a high speed blender, so this should work fine. Sometimes I let them warm up a little bit. And if you don't have a high speed blender, you might want to do that or pop them in the microwave for a little while. But basically this is ice cream, with no dairy, uh, no ice cream machine, no nothing. Right. Um, there are many ways that you can make this. Obviously the fundamental uh, necessary aspect is the frozen banana, but you can add milk, you can add soy milk or almond milk, you can add um, coconut oil or coconut milk, you can add- We did peanut butter yesterday. That was amazing. We also chucked a couple of Oreos in, which made it slightly less healthy, but what was two Oreos and a big batch of ice cream? Exactly. We're not necessarily aiming for only healthy. We're aiming for using things up and making things delicious. And then if you want to add other things in that are tasty and wonderful, you do you. You can add in um, other fruit. Again, that's a common theme here. You can add in Oreos. You can add Oreos into your pancakes. Um, yeah. It's totally up to you. So I'm going to put in a little bit of milk just to help everything stay together. But do you want to, Mel, take a look at those yes. pancakes? Yes. Let's Remember check out these doing? pancakes. You won't have to listen to this very loud blender sound. They are just starting to get some bubbles. They're not quite ready. I want to see a few more bubbles before I try and turn them. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, they might be ready. All right, let's go for it. She's blending over there. What happened? Oh, yeah. Tough to do with. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Thank I will. You. I'm going to take this back. Hi, Justin. We are going to come back over and check out this banana ice cream, banana ice cream, banana swirl. So, 
See how that's looking so far? That is just frozen bananas and a tiny bit of milk to help it blend up more easily. I'm just gonna pause that so you guys can see. And you know, basically the idea is put it in the blender, let it go, let it go, let it go. Gonna add in some more milk, but I gotta hand this off. Thank you, Mel. Turns out it's a lot easier to flip pancakes while not trying to also film yourself doing it. And you're learning your <laughs> pancakes. So let's get the blender going more. It is amazing. It basically has a consistency like soft serve. It's yep. phenomenal. Um, when I made it yesterday, I used an immersion blender. That worked great too. So, so did you add any um, liquid to yours? I didn't actually. Uh, I had four, approximately four bananas, um, a quarter cup of peanut butter, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, and the <coughs> Oreos. <coughs> And uh, we're spoon. that was it. So you don't need a liquid. I like to add a liquid. It makes the blender work a little bit better. Yep. And I'm not trying to cut out dairy, but... Also, I mean, we use, we use uh, soy milk in our house, so... Soy milk. So, check it out. Oh. Whoa. It's yes. totally got a soft serve consistency. Yum. It's so Go good. on. Go on. <laughs> oh, no. Go on, Paul. Okay, cool. let's go check out the pancakes. <laughs> oh my god, so good. Well, how May brain freezes over there. Ah! <laughs> Look at these pancakes. Ah. Yum. Oh my god, I'm just gonna make no brain freeze noises over here. Seriously, guys, though, it's, <laughs> Look it's at that. so good. So, no flour, no milk, just some old bananas that somebody may have thrown out. Never throw out I mean, bananas. somebody, not, of, not us, obviously. Never. Look at that. Delicious. Healthy, great baby food. I used to smother Gray's in yogurt when he was one. Look at that. All done. Nice. And so, let's just check out this. this. Oh, my God. So good. Guys, look at that banana and ice cream. Oh, you know what we'll do? Actually, before we move it into a bowl, let's put some cocoa powder in it. So you can make a Ooh, powder. yes. Um, cocoa powder, vanilla, whatever you want. So, I don't know how many bananas are in here. Maybe three. So let's just do, you know, a spoonful. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if you know me, you'll know that measuring <laughs> is not my strong suit. But everything always turns out fine. So... It is not looking chocolatey enough, so we're just gonna do another spoonful. There we go. Yeah. Now that that lovely sound is over, a few other things that you can add: um, cinnamon, nutmeg, <coughs> coconut oil. Any uh, other fresh fruit, make it strawberry flavored, raspberry chocolate. flavored. A uh, chocolate, I know. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, did we mention Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> Have we mentioned Oreos? Have we mentioned that you can add any Oreos kind, to any kind of cookie? So cookie, nuts. I mean, the yeah. list is endless. Nuts it's just a great, delicious. you know, a base for any kind of I'm ice cream. Like some kind of. Like toffee that. bits Ooh, would be yum. really good. Um, you know, right. So did you put milk in? Did you I put, put a little bit of milk in, right. which is why it's a bit probably more soft serve consistency. Yep. Mine was like real ice cream consistency yesterday. I was so yum. Still delicious. More brain freeze coming. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so hang good. on, hang on. Where's my spoon? Oh my gosh. Mm. I bet as well the peanut butter helps with the keeping it thick, mm -hmm. the consistency. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, you can play around. If you want more of a soft serve consistency, 
if you want more of a regular ice cream consistency. Ooh, let's not burn the pancakes. And we've got 10 seconds until these muffins are ready. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, yeah, those are looking awesome. Oh, let's have a look. Ooh, what I love about them is that they're, they really puff up and they are so moist. And again, no flour, no sugar. No flour, no sugar, no milk. Look at that. Banana muffins. They got a little knife. Let's just check these. Excuse my dodgy camera work. Look at that. Oh yes, that is ready. Yum. Look at this one. Oh, look at that. Should we just lift it out? Yum. Okay, I am very happy with those. I mean, I've made them a lot, so. <laughs> All right. Next so, up. I have a funny story about banana bread. Um, is it as funny as your raccoon story? <laughs> if that's as funny as my raccoon story, which I will tell you another time. Uh, it involves a raccoon in my shower. <laughs> oh my god! But I have goosebumps just thinking about um, it. Um, this <laughs> is a, just an excellent example of how I am not good at measuring things. But you know how we were just discussing how I was thinking: do people really need a recipe for banana bread? And there's so many banana bread recipes out there, but I have found the one that I think is the best. It is also um, on the healthier side, which is nice. And it was discovered because I completely did not read a recipe. Um, I was <laughs> cooking with my four-year-old, so I was not exactly paying attention. And it's funny, I bought a bag of bananas at the grocery store, which came with its own little bag uh, of banana decorated recipes. And it had a recipe for banana bread, so I figured I would try it. And um, I completely ignored an entire cup of flour. It has one cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of all-purpose flour. And I just didn't put in the cup of all-purpose flour. I was like, wow, this is the most, the moistest, softest, most delicious banana bread. And it's because I completely ignored an entire cup of flour. Okay, um, I just have to butt in right now with this banana joke. What do you call a banana who gets all the girls? A banana smoothie. Ooh, <laughs> thanks, Tim. I think full on dead. I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, I will put this banana bread recipe up so you guys can see it. But here's just a little preview. I crossed out the cup of flour because it turns <laughs> out you don't need it. Yeah. Um, now we're out of whole wheat flour, and to be honest, I'm not even sure whether I'm going to finish this whole recipe right now because you don't really need to see me make it. Um, I'm sure you guys can follow a banana bread recipe on your own. I'm just going to share that, but um. Basically, you, we've got a preheated oven, you cream the butter and sugar until light and fluffy, so. I think um, there are a million uh, banana bread recipes out there, but it's almost, you know, you get overwhelmed with yes. all the choices it's nice to and which one. ones are actually good. Yeah. Right, it's good to just have that one trusty recipe that you just cook time after time after time totally. and that's what this has become for us exactly so you know so we're sharing it with you three quarters of a cup of sugar i like to use brown sugar uh butter so we're gonna cream those together um tim's just letting us know that he's here all week with more jokes oh excellent so um you can come back with a daily tim joke <laughs> yes all right we're creaming together the butter and sugar so after that is two eggs. Um, I have also, on my theme of not really being good at measuring, I often do not really bother paying attention to the details of, ingredient, uh, of uh, adding ingredients, which is funny because I wrote a cookbook in which I tell people to do things. Um, but that's because you know lots of people like instructions. I do appreciate an instruction, and then I appreciate reading it and then not really following it. But I did read a, um, I'm trying to learn more about the science behind cooking. And it talks about how you really want to cream butter and sugar together to... Until it's light. You want to get it light and fluffy. Yes. And you're, whipping, um, you're getting oxygen. Yes. And that's what's going to give it the air. 
So I didn't break up the butter at all, which probably would have been a helpful first step. Again, me not being much for you know, I'm classic at that too. I see a recipe, I look at the ingredients, and sometimes I read what I'm supposed to do with them, yeah. and then sometimes I'm just like, ah, I already know what I'm doing with that. And you know what? And it's, I'm time, not always right. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of times it works out, and a lot of times you find yourself yeah. uh, stuck halfway through, having that little Yeah. I don't know if you call it lazy cooking. <laughs> For sure. I think lazy cooking is an extremely good description of how I generally work, but you know what? It works for me, and that's what works. So, it ah. also, you know, if it, it's all about you doing what works for you and making food that is delicious and feeds you and your family. And if you want to be extremely deliberate and careful, good. And if not, that's fine too. Yeah. I have definitely learned to be more thorough in my recipe reading uh, since joining the Food Waste Feast project. So for example, we're now supposed to sift in the flowers. <laughs> I'm going to blatantly ignore that because I never sift. I feel like that's an American thing. I feel like a lot of British people sift. They sift. Like, they do sift. Yes, ah, yes. I do not sift. I also struggled with the whole cup measurements when yes. I came here. Yes, it's I'm not like, as but, smart as the way that But that's not things. precise. How yeah. do you know? Not precise at all. So one thing is um, when you do flour in, um, when you're scooping flour, there are ways that that can vary by a crazy amount if you are, as we are discussing, not um, using weight, which is a yes. much smarter way of doing things. Um, I would say in my opinion, but also in science's opinion. So, you know, weighing <laughs> these is great. Uh, but if a measure, if a recipe doesn't have measurements, um, for weight or you do not have a scale, although you should own a scale, also you will have better coffee if you have a scale. Yeah. Um, the best way to do flour is to kind of s s scoop it like this, just loosen, loosen it, up. it up a little bit. And then, uh, I would a say flat. the best way to do it would just be to flatten off. But of course I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you know, lazy. I know. Whenever Hashtag I lazy cooking. <laughs> whenever I find a recipe that has weights, I'm like, yes, yes. I'm using that. But I, I feel like nowadays a lot a lot of the books and things um, they have both. I think uh, yes. I think people are I adapting sure more to do that in our cookbook because yep. um, number one, used to cooking in restaurants. In restaurants, it's very smart because you are you know doing things in high volume. You want to do things by weight plus depending on how your different cooks are making things you want to make sure that it's the same no matter who's making it again weights are good for that so um that is why we did that but back to trying to not leave out yes. something huge of the recipe that i have already <laughs> out of. we are now on two eggs one teaspoon baking soda half teaspoon salt a cup of flour i'm out of whole wheat flour but actually usually i would just do one cup of whole wheat flour so this is healthier and um, easier. Just leave out the entire cup of flour. Also, it's a little distracting when somebody's in your face well, you with know. a phone demanding that you talk. It's um, all fun. Or it's, it, sorry if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. Or orang a quang? Orang oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> yes, she loves your shelves and also loves recipes with weights because she can never find the right measuring yes. cups. I agree. So Oranga Quang, um, also known as, if you are my husband, the Orange UK Wang. <laughs> Mostly funny for Britain, but <laughs> That's like me and Yo's mind. Yes, do you guys this, want to know how uh, yep. Mel pronounces Yosemite? I was, I was updating my software on my... <laughs> on my MacBook Air one time and I asked my husband I was like oh did you get the new software update update um it's called Yosemite and he was like what it's like yeah you know Yosemite and he was like uh <laughs> do you mean Yosemite <laughs> like, um I, I guess you know it's so one of those things that you just don't know in our two <laughs> mixed British American <laughs> 
So guys. Brilliant. Three very ripe bananas. Hmm. So, so mushy and delicious. Um, on, for those of this. you at home who don't know what the connection here is, is a uh, food waste feast um, is May and her sister Irene's baby that they started. And I am May's sister-in-law. She's married to my brother. And I also love food. I was, once, I was once a chef, but you know, mostly I'm just a mother. Mel is um, worked as a chef on a super yacht and just, uh, you know, did things like Ran cooking classes when butcher I lived in fish South Africa. In the of I, I, <laughs> I have I butchered a fish larger than myself on the aft deck of a yacht and held its beating heart in my hand. It was pretty savage. Vanilla. Not the beating heart of Not the fish, <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you guys that. Uh, Costco has good vanilla yes. in large amounts that makes it much more affordable. It is excellent vanilla. So, <clears throat> this is the banana bread batter. Mm. It's quite goopy because it's missing an entire cup of flour, <laughs> but that's why it's delicious. But it's going to be very moist and delicious. So, also, you know, chocolate chips in your banana bread. Ooh, you should put in chocolate chips, speaking of yes. which. Uh, did not prepare ahead enough to find oh, maybe I should keep this in. All right. Anyone want another peek at the pantry? Let's get some chocolate chips. This is the baking section. And, oh, yeah, here we go. Chocolate chips. Also, guys, you probably... I don't hmm. know. Who, who does this? Tell me if you do this. But if you keep this around from when you're using your cooking... Uh, you can just use it. Yeah. You can use your hand. Yeah. old school grandma knowledge here. Yeah. One of those things that I think most people do, but if you don't, now you know. There you go. Don't have to get out of your Turn. Turns out there's lots of things really hard to do with one hand. <laughs> right. There we go. Some help here. Guess who doesn't measure things? I don't. <laughs> We're just going to put all of them in there <laughs> why not and we'll just give it a mm. brief stir mix them all in and here is our mm. delightful banana bread batter so if you make a banana a lot of banana bread you might think that this is a bit of a loose batter which it is but it will still bake up to an actual banana bread situation Mmm, yum. Delicious. Pop it in here. Obviously, you guys are not going to get to see the final version of this live. I mean, if you want to sit and hang out with us for the next, you know, 50 <laughs> minutes or whatever, you're welcome to. Um, but I can't promise it'll be very interesting. We will post a finished picture, as always, for anything that doesn't get completed in our live demo. And we'll add in the recipes. We'll write down the recipes for the pancakes, the muffins, yep. the um, adapted recipe, a.k.a. the I forgot an entire cup of flour in the recipe, but it turns out <laughs> deliciously. Uh, come over here, guys. Um, for anyone who just recently joined us, check out the banana muffin. This is a... Banana muffin made with zero flour. Ooh, um, yeah, let's check open that out. out. And they're what? super moist. Mind like blown. every time I've made these for someone for the first time, they they and I tell them what's in it, they bite into it and then they're like, oh wow, oh, so like good. it's genuinely really moist and delicious. And these banana pancakes are just bananas egg and optional a little bit of oats for structure or not and a little bit of baking soda mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not gonna taste it we are signing out today guys thanks for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow for another live show <laughs> <laughs> was that terrible that was pretty bad sorry guys we're still learning
Okay. I don't know.